Good morning, brethren. I just want to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you are doing well, you and your families respectively. I just want to welcome you to this uh, Sunday English service where we have been receiving the message and the word of encouragement, the word of hope that we bring to you through the use of technology because of this, uh, this lockdown that we are all in since uh, over a month now. And I hope uh, that we will uh, have a time to connect through the reading and through the hearing of uh, this word. And I pray that it will be a blessing to us, uh, to our souls, to our spirit, and that we continue to enjoy salvation. Even during this time of crisis, it's, it's possible. Uh, we read in uh, Philippians chapter 4, on verse 7, where we read about the peace of God. It says, and the peace of God, uh, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind, Christ Jesus. Well, this is the kind of peace that we need in a time like this. Peace that is, uh, is unshakable. Peace that is not uh, determined by external conditions, uh, whether good or bad. Of course, uh, all of us, uh, the current situation is not good. It's not good. But even in, this, um, in a situation like this, we can still experience God's peace. So because uh, it's peace that only depends on God and uh, our Lord Jesus Christ himself is called the King of Peace. I know we are living in a certain time. The future seems dark uh, to most, for most of people. Um, for some people, some dreams, their dreams are kind of shattered. Uh, we read in, uh, in James uh, chapter 1 on verse 17, it says, He with whom there is no... Uh, variation or shadow of, of turning he he never he never changes he never turns this is the god that we believe in um this is the god that we trust and who can change situations from bad to good he's the same yesterday he's the same today he's the same forever he remained the same forever he's the god to be in the midst of uh, this crisis we can choose to continue to uh, keep our eyes focused on our Lord and He has the answer for us and He can help us. He can change the situations. He can turn around things because there is no evil that comes from the throne of God. The Bible says that uh, He comes but to steal, to kill and to destroy. But Jesus came so we may have life and a satisfying one. God will make sure that you continue to have a satisfying life uh, through his son Jesus. So let's hope for restoration. Uh, let's hope for things to be turned around by our God. Let's continue to pray. Uh, let's continue to trust in God. Even in a crisis like this, we pray that God will continue to open our eyes to see how he's working. He's working around the world. How he's working in our lives. How he's working in the church. I know we are in the lockdown. I think I would say that this lockdown has pushed even the church to be confined from the buildings. And the message of hope, Christ is being preached. Um, is, is the fo he's the focus, is the message. And, uh, uh, and we can see that uh, the message that are being preached um, are going beyond church-specific congregation and more than ever before. So this is something that we should thank God for. Um, even if we are not uh, operating in a, uh, normal circumstances, in a regular circumstances but without the, all the logistics that, that we uh, we need uh, God is still uh, uh, on his throne and uh, he's still uh, winning souls and, uh, and there are a lot of people that are coming to him so those are some of the things that uh, uh, I pray that God will open our, our eyes to see what's going on and and what he's doing so he never loses it he won't waste anything, I can, I can assure you, and he will be glorified. In the meantime, uh, let's continue to pray. Let's continue to focus on him. Let's continue to trust him, uh, he who is able to bring uh, salvation, he who is able to bring restoration to the world, he who is able to save people, he who is able to turn things around. Let's continue to focus on him. I just want us to read in the book of Esther, chapter 4, from verse uh, 14 to verse 16, and see what the Bible says. For if you keep silent at uh, this time, 
Relief and deliverance shall arise uh, for the Jews uh, from elsewhere, but you and your father's house will perish. And uh, who knows that uh, you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this and for this very occasion. Then Esther told um, them to give this answer to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast for me, and neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. I also and my maids will fast as you do. And then I will go to the king, though it's against the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and did all that Esther had commanded him. Praise the Lord. In the previous chapters, chapter 3, chapter 3, chapter 2, and chapter 1, but we see two Jews uh, who had been carried away from uh, Jerusalem with the captives into exile by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar. And these two uh, Jews include Mordecai and, and Esther, uh, as you read in these, in these uh, scriptures. Uh, Mordecai was actually a um, cousin to Esther, uh, who had lost uh, her parents when she was still young. So, and it's actually Mordecai who raised Esther. So in an interesting circumstance, we see Esther become queen in, uh, in, in this Persian empire uh, under the reign of uh, uh, Suerus. Um, God uh, favored her. And uh, Mordecai was also serving at uh, the king's uh, the king's gate. He was one of the servants of the king's gate. So while uh, uh, God's favor opened doors for Esther and Mordecai, it's also interesting to see how it attracted uh, the NMT of, uh, of Haman. Haman, who happened to be the prime minister, he got promoted as a prime minister, actually uh, second right after the after the king himself, the emperor himself. And uh, the king order was that uh, all servants serving at the king's gate uh, would bow and, and worship Haman. And uh, this was supposed to be, this was, was uh, basically the instruction given to all the servants. And uh, these servants were including uh, uh, Mordecai, a Jew who believed in uh, the God of Abraham, who believed in the God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of Moses. Uh, but he refused because uh, in their law, in their culture, they only worship the true God and, and not people. So this uh, made uh, basically angry uh, Haman and uh, it actually became the main trigger for the uh, remaining uh, part of the story. How we see God um, coming at the rescue of his people, uh, how we see them enmity between Haman and uh, the Jews people. And, and just for your for your information, for a reminder, uh, Haman was... Uh, was a descendant of uh, the Amalekites. So, and we know that the Amalekites was one of the enemies of the Israelites. So, this is not new to the Jews um, and Haman. So, but we see um, God's hand. But meanwhile, uh, Haman f tried to find all the means, all the ways that to kill basically uh, Mordecai and the Jews because Mordecai refused basically to worship him, or she, um, refused to, to bow before him. And then uh, he tried to find all the means, and and uh, uh, he actually uh, appeared before the king with uh, with this petition. It was granted. The king um, released uh, an executive order uh, that uh, Mordecai be killed, uh, that all the Jews uh, uh, be killed, um, and uh, and it was uh, it became a very difficult time for the Jews. And it was only in the capital city, but in all the places in 127. Uh, provinces of, of Persia, um, the king had ordered that uh, all the Jews uh, be killed uh, following the request uh, from, from Haman. So it became a time of mourning and sorrow for the Jews uh, around the country. But uh, Mordecai came to learn about it and uh, he didn't keep quiet. And this is actually one of the things that uh, as Christian, we should be reminded that uh, we should not forget uh, that uh, the devil uh, Satan is always against us, and that should know uh, as much as we can the schemes of the devil. So the same way uh, Mordecai was uh, at the king's gate, uh, busy doing other things, but he also knew uh, the plans of Haman to kill his people. So meaning that uh, however much busy we can be in our jobs, in, in our families, 
we need to be sensitive to the spiritual world, to know what's going on. And we are called, all of us, to do that. If we don't do that, then we don't know how to pray because uh, we know that the devil is against us and uh, he tried to uh, do whatever he wants to do to kill, to destroy and to steal. But us as believers, we have to be people who are awake, who are sober, uh, to know that uh, uh, the, his plans, to know his schemes and to know how to go against him, to know how to resist him uh, and to know how to pray to God. So it's good to see how Mordecai was very alert, was very sober. And the good thing uh, that we can also learn out of this is that uh, he, didn't keep, uh, he didn't keep it uh, secret. He didn't keep silent. Um, he didn't keep it to himself. Um, he knew that uh, uh, there was need for other Jews to know, and starting with Queen Esther. And um, that's how we come to these scriptures whereby he re trying to alert Esther of the schemes of Haman to destroy all the Jews. And we can read uh, that uh, uh, Esther's response was, uh, was positive, uh, that uh, uh, she decided basically to go before the king. But before going to the king, they decided that they should fast and pray. They actually declared a three-day fasting and prayer uh, for all the Jews population that were living in that country. So this is a good reminder to us that uh, prayer our warfare is not carnal. Our warfare is not uh, uh, physical. Our warfare is, is spiritual. Even when uh, Haman was plotting, was uh, trying to put the plans in place, all the logistics in place, things that were visible. So the Jews were busy praying to God, who is not seen, but they, they believed that uh, their God hear prayers. And it's a reminder to us that I believe as whenever we face persecution, trials of any sort, adversity, NMT, uh, we should really declare a spiritual war. We should pray. We should fast and uh, believe in God, that uh, God is on our side. Uh, we should believe uh, in victory. We should believe that uh, God hears our, our prayers. We should believe that uh, God is on our side. Hallelujah. So I just want to let you know that uh, you may be going through tough time, trial times, and uh, and you may be facing adversity. I know currently we're all facing this uh, one common thing, uh, one common problem, but at an individual level, we may go through different uh, types of trials. But even as you go through those trials, I just want to remind you to trust in the Lord. The way you do this is not to bow to the circumstances, is not to bow to fear, is not to bow to Haman, is not to bow to the devil. It's actually to uh, humble yourself before God because the Bible tells us that humble under the mighty hand of the Most High God and resist the devil and he shall flee. So one thing that we do as believers, we humble ourselves to God. We humble ourselves before God and we will resist the devil. So prayer is a weapon that we as Christians have, that whenever we face different types of challenges, different types of trials, different types of persecution, different types of adversity, that we have our God who is in heaven and he is our Father who hears our prayers. And whenever we call on him, he intervenes. So just be encouraged. Instead of bowing down, instead of uh, uh, trembling, instead of uh, um, humbling before that situation, bowing, bowing to fear, bowing to anxiety, I just want to remind you to just bow before God in the name of Jesus Christ and you will see intervention come, come your way. So they fasted uh, for three days. Hallelujah. Ahaman's plans or schemes were underway we can still see that uh, there was there was a shift in the in the spiritual realm that was already happening they couldn't see it they couldn't feel it but something was happening so i just want to remind you that even when we pray sometimes you pray today you pray tomorrow the following day you realize that the situation is worse than before i just want to remind you that it doesn't remove that the fact that uh, the favor of god is also growing the, the goodness of God is coming on your way in a tremendous way, more than never before. So just hang in there. Whatever situation you may be going through, just be reminded. It may be worse than yesterday. It may 
be worse than last year. You might have prayed last year and you are praying this year. Instead of things changing, you are seeing your worst things happening. I just want to remind you to hang in there, continue to pray. It may not look like things are changing, but I just want to remind you that in the spiritual realm, in the spiritual world, things are changing in your favor. And we see this actually when the petition of for Esther was granted by the king. Because we see here uh, where we read in chapter 4, it was not allowed. It was the law was saying that you don't just present um, yourself. The queen couldn't present herself before, be, 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 before the, the, the king calls her. But she took a risk. She took a risk. But because she had prayed, God granted her favor. And that favor worked for her and her petition was granted. Her request was granted. Praise the Lord. I don't know what you have prayed for. The situation may look uh, worse than uh, the time you prayed. And you are wondering, is God hearing my prayers? Is God, are my prayers effective? And you are trying to wonder. But I just want to tell you that... Uh, uh, in the spiritual world, you are making a very big impact. You may see in the visible world things that are happening in different ways, in different directions. But I just want to remind you that in the spiritual world, just because you have prayed, just because you have bowed before God, just because you decided to not bow before that circumstance, circumstance before that situation and you have decided to bow before God I just want to remind you that God is on your side and then God's intervention will come your way if we can read in chapter 6 we see uh, things start changing on verse 1 it says on that night the king could not sleep and he ordered that the book of memorable de deeds the chronicles be brought and they were read they were read before the king and it was found written there Mordecai, that how Mordecai had told of Britain and, uh, and Tirish, two of the king's attendants who guarded the door, who had sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. On verse 3 it says, And the king said, What honor or distinction uh, has been given more to Mordecai uh, for this? Then the king's servant who ministered to him said, Nothing has been done for him. The king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had just come out of court of the king's palace to ask the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows he had prepared for him. Basically, it was Haman that had prepared for a gallows where he would hang uh, Mordecai. He was busy uh, basically executing his plans. And the king's servant said to him, Behold, Haman is standing in the court and the king said let him come in hallelujah six it says so haman came in and the king said to him what shall shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor now haman said to himself to whom will the king delight to honor more than to me and haman said to the king for the man whom the king delights to honor let royal apparel brought which the king has won and horse which the king has ridden, and the royal crown be set on his head. And let the apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes. Let him um, array the man whom the king delights to honor, and conduct him on horseback through the open square of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. On verse 10 it says, Then the king said to Haman, Make us and take the apparel and the horse, as you have said, and do so to Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Leave out nothing that you have spoken. Hallelujah. Evil the Haman was planning against Mordecai, we see how things are flipping now. Things that he was telling himself that will happen to him, the best things basically that he was thought would happen to him, they are being shifted to Mordecai. And the bad things that he had uh, planned to do against Mordecai, now they are flipping to him. Praise the Lord. So I just want you to be encouraged that our God is a God who is just, whenever we call on him, whenever we bow, whenever we decide to worship him, basically he will come at our rescue and i just want to encourage you telling you that 
you continue to worship the true God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. You continue to serve God. You continue to, 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 to pray. You continue to read the word of God. You continue to meditate upon the word of God. You continue to trust God. He's able to do exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you can pray for, beyond what you can ask. That's what the Bible tells us. But we are reading it here. And I believe it may not necessarily this kind of situation, but this is a lesson we are learning from out of this chapter, out of this book that is applicable to us as believers. In the name of Jesus. And I just want to remind you that you are more than conquerors. Your prayers are so powerful. Continue to pray. Continue to believe in God. Hallelujah. See, in chapter 7, without necessarily reading uh, all the details, we actually see now all the plans, all the plots, the evil plots that Haman had uh, had, had um, against uh, the Jews, against Mordecai, um, are turning against him. So we read on, on verse uh, 10, uh, from chapter 7 says, So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Oh, wow. The Bible tells us that uh, the Lord prepares a table for us before our enemies. So Haman was the enemy of Mordecai. He was the enemy of the Jews. Oh, hallelujah. And whatever schemes uh, that he had against the people of Israel, the Jews, now everything is turning against him. Hallelujah. So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath was pacified. Praise the Lord. I just want to let you know that God will fight your battles. If you decide, if you continue to bow before God, if you continue to worship God, if you continue to believe in him, if you continue to believe in the Son of God, the Bible tells us that he is the only way. He is the only truth. Hallelujah. And he is our life in the name of Jesus Christ. So I pray that uh, God will give you victory. God will give you uh, triumph. God will give you, will give you success in the name of Jesus. That any situation that is against you, any adversity that you may be going through, I just want to remind you again that God is on your side and he is able to give you victory. Hallelujah. And we can read in uh, chapter 8 um, from verse 11, it says, In it the king granted the Jews who were in every city to gather and to defend their lives, to destroy, to slay, and to wipe out any armed force that might attack them, their little ones and women, and to take the enemy's goods for spoil. Hallelujah. I pray that God... And we actually have that victory. We've already been given that authority through Christ Jesus to destroy, to defend ourselves, and to slay. That's what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, on verse 3. For the weapons of our warfare is not physical, but they are mighty before God for the overthrow and destruction of strongholds. Our weapons, the weapons of our warfare, are not physical, they are spiritual. They are mighty before God to destroy and to overthrow any stronghold. 12, it says, On one day in all the provinces of King Asuerus, the 13th, 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, a copy of the writing was to be issued as a decree in every province and as a proclamation to all peoples and the Jews should be ready on that day to avenge themselves upon their enemies. Hallelujah. So the courier who were mounted on swift beasts that were used in the king's service went out, being hurried and urged on by the king's command. And the decree was released in Shushan, the capital. And Mordecai went forth uh, from the presence of the king in royal apparel and blue white, with a great crown of gold and with a robe of fine linen and purple and the city of Shushan shouted and rejoiced. Hallelujah. So you remember that before it was uh, a time for mourning for the Jews. It was time for sorrow for the Jews. But things have changed. Instead of sorrow, it's now time for gladness. It's now time to rejoice. It's now time to dance as the Bible tells us. 
in Psalm 30, on verse 11, that you have turned my mourning into dancing for me. You have put off my sackcloth and guard me with gladness. I pray that uh, your mourning will turn into gladness. I pray that uh, your sorrow will turn into dancing. Hallelujah. As you continue to trust in your Lord, as it happened to the Jews in the Persian Empire in the time of Mordecai and Esther. God is able to turn situations around. He's able to change things. He's able to change circumstances. Just continue to hang. He will come and he will bring interventions for you and you will rejoice. And not only you, but even the people around you will rejoice. And that's why we have to understand that whenever sorrow come to us, whenever mourning come to us, Every time God will bring intervention, we will celebrate, we will rejoice, but it will not end with us alone, but even people around us. So that's why we have to understand that uh, there is a higher purpose. There is a bigger purpose than us just suffering. The purpose is for God to be glorified. And I believe that as God brings interventions to you, you will rejoice, but even people around you who will see that, they will rejoice in the God who is bringing salvation to you. So as we can see on verse 17, it says, And in every province, in every city, wherever the king's command and his decree came, the Jews had gladness and joy, a feast and a holiday. And many from among the peoples of the land submitted themselves to the Jew rights and became Jews. Hallelujah. And they became Jews for the fear of the Jews had fallen upon them. Praise God. So we understand that uh, sometimes when the devil comes against us, God brings victory. God gives us um, success. God, he turns our battles becomes God's battle. Hallelujah. But not only that, after he has given us victory, what was our, our sorrow becomes, uh, turns into gladness. Hallelujah. When they see the power of God, when they see the greatness of God, when they see the love of God, when they see what God has done in our lives, people will rejoice with us. They will come and they will want to know the God we serve. So just be encouraged, knowing very well that God sees what you are going through, but he will bring interventions. He will bring rescue to you and you will rejoice. And not only you, but the people around you. So my brother, my sister, be encouraged. I don't know what you may be going through, but even as you pray, even as we pray collectively for this uh, specific problem that we are all facing, I believe that God will be glorified. It didn't come from God, but God will use it to glorify his holy name. Hallelujah. And I just want to encourage you that uh, there is nothing, there is no temptation, there is no trial, that God cannot overcome, that you cannot overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. May you come up, may you stand, may you pray, may you bow before God and not to the circumstances that you are facing currently and you will see God's goodness in the land of the living. So God bless you so much. I just wanted to share these few scriptures with you and encourage you uh, that God is on your side. Hallelujah. God bless you.